Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's awesome call. We have the, uh, the fabulous Jane Anderson with us today. Now, I've had the privilege of interviewing Jane before. She's a complete rock star in the area of uh, branding and uh, content. Uh, she is the one of the top three brand <laughs> experts globally. She is on the Ford Coaching Council. She's authored seven books, seven. Uh, and she is, um, you know, very shortly going to be doing this amazing, I think it's called Jane, amazing bootcamp content creation. And you would have like 400 people sign up to come and do that with you over the next weekend. We do, which is super exciting. So, um, yeah, we're going to have a very busy couple of days. <laughs> very busy it's going to be great. Very busy couple of days. Uh, so I can interrupt the introduction. Now, Jane uh, has also been completely trusted by companies like IKEA, like Virgin, um, like Cisco, like Mercedes Benz, you name it, the who's who in the industry uh, frequently is featured on television. So, what I'm hoping to um, uh, to to get from the call with you today, Jane, is a little bit of understanding. Now that we're in this situation with the coronavirus and there's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace, I want to understand what's appropriate for us as business owners and business leaders to be doing around our content strategy. How how should we be communicating in the marketplace? Uh, one to serve people and I guess, two, to represent our brands in the best way possible. So it's a very broad uh, question, and I just I want to leave that over to you because I know you've got so much value to add. Yeah, well, first of all, again, so great to reconnect, Karen, Kevin. I love catching up with you. You're the best interviewer. You get the brand as the best interview. If there was, a, if there was an award, you get that one. So, um, you get that awarded for me anyway. <laughs> so, um, so thanks and for the uh, opportunity to work with your, with your group and your tribe. Um, so, yeah, so one of the most common questions at the moment, so as you said, I work with a lot of people and helping them to create their content strategy, build their brand and build their tribes and communities. And, uh, and the most common question at the moment is for a lot of business owners, we've had, uh, you know, businesses um, closed down, physical offices, and now we go, well, I've still got, I've still got a database and I've still got social media. So can I do something with this? But, you know, but I don't know what to put out because, you know, it's not like I can say, hey, we're open from nine o'clock this morning because that worked last week and that doesn't work anymore now. So there's all this confusion and going, well, and also there's, I guess for a lot of people is also, is that kind of feeling that I just don't feel like, I don't know what to say because this is such an awkward time. And I don't want to look like that person who says, you know, my we're right in the middle of a pandemic and then putting this shingle up saying, hey, buy my thing. You know, it feels inappropriate. And so there's a, a real grappling around what am I, what do I do? What do I say? I've got to say something, but I don't know what to say. And uh, or the other challenge is, is that people have done no content and now they're in panic and they're going, Okay, now what do we do? And I received uh, last week actually. I received. I I bought a. I bought my car from a car yard five years ago, and I have never heard from them in five years. And last week I got a text, and I got two emails in two days. So this is a succession across three days, saying you need to upgrade your car. It's end of financial year. Come to our sale. And I was like. I haven't even heard from you for five years. So, so there's sort of those who have been communicating with their clients and customers well, and now they're confused. And then there's those who are panicking and going, how, what do I, now what do I do? And because we've realized we've got, we need to tap into our database, but we haven't communicated with our customers for the last five years. <laughs> so I, hence I said to the people at the car, yeah, yeah, you probably need to come to some, to some training. Um, so, <laughs> so, and you probably find this, Kevin, that they're kind of, I suppose they're the two main camps. Um, and so with the first camp, if you've been communicating with your customers, it's probably kind of across both really too, is you have to, first of all, and I think your instincts are right, is that, you know, I'm feeling awkward, I feel uncomfortable, don't know what to say. So the best thing that you can do at the moment is you've kind of got to work out, in, you've got to shift from selling to educating and supporting and being there for your customers. So the first thing is, is, you know, really just coming from kindness, generosity and saying, are you okay? Can we help you? What do you need? Um, and really trying to show that, you know, this is, I'm, I'm here to help, I'm here to serve and I'm here to be generous. 
what I would remind people is that um, when you put it, so what does that look like? Like, let's say, for example, um, an example I used recently was if you were a fashion store, maybe you had a retail fashion store that's recently been closed down. So um, maybe you had, um, if I said, okay, well, what were you doing before? And you go, oh, we've got our, um, let's say we have white jeans. So I live in an area of Australia that is near the beach. So I live in white jeans. So I'll just, let's, for example, white jeans. Let's say you have that. So uh, maybe in the past you went, you know, you took photos of your stock in the windows and on the store and you put them online and said, you know, we've got new stock in and come and have a look. Well, what you're going to have to do is you can't do that, obviously. So now what you've got to do is you've got to educate your customer and you've got to go, okay, I've got a garage full of white jeans at the moment because they're not in the shop. <laughs> I've had to close the shop. So um, one of the things that I really recommend to people is it's now your job. You are the expert now and you've always been the expert, but now your job is to teach us and your job is to teach your customer to say, hey, I don't know if you're working from home now. The whole world's now working from home. Maybe you're struggling with what to work out, what to wear, because you don't want to wear a suit if you're working from home and you want to feel dressed though and you want to feel professional. You know, white jeans are great because they go with all different colours and you can put a jacket on if you have to, if you've got a, a meeting online um, and you'll still feel fresh and professional without feeling like you've got your pyjamas on all day. Um, here are some things that you can wear with white jeans. And as Coco Chanel said is, you know, simplicity is the highest form of elegance, you know. So, um, and then, oh, by the way, if you want white jeans, we've got some in stock. <laughs> so, so that's the first thing. So I don't know if that makes sense, Kevin. I know you do a lot of work with your, with your um, clients and your community around, you know, really educating and being the educator as opposed to sort of spamming people. Does that come up like that? Just, you know, helping sort of to shift into that educational message as opposed to buy my stuff. I think there's a real a real mix, and the analogy that comes to me, which has been around for a while, would have been from Gary Vaynerchuk, which is the analogy of jab, 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 right. That's hook. it. Yeah, yeah. Add yeah. value, add value, add value, and then hey, here's here's how we can help you. And by the way, yes. And by the way, <laughs> and, and yeah, the example of the white jeans is great then because you're you're really talking about how you educate the market and add value to them in their current situation, and then you say, by the way, you can purchase some of these if you like. Uh, hey, and it's it a great example. It's super important. So many people are sat at home in their pajamas, feeling less productive, less alert than they would normally. So they do need to put on some white jeans and, uh, and, and get into <laughs> the right energy or yeah. earrings or whatever the piece is to, to get them through. So that's a real great example. So the education. Now, from that perspective, um, like around educating, some, some people listening will be thinking, well, I, how, how do I educate on my product or service? They, they may struggle yeah. to think about, well, what content can I create, right? Uh, yes. so what tips or advice would you have for them to, to help create that spark of idea so that they can create valuable educational content? Great. Um, so the first, it's such a great question because most people, there's two things come up. People go, I don't know anything. Um, and you do. Um, there's the first question and I don't know what to say. And the other thing would be is to, um, you know, just remember that you have really good ideas all the time. You know, if you're a business owner, you're in the, you're, we're all in the business of solving problems. And that's essentially all ideas are really is solving a problem. So what I encourage most people to do is to write down, let's think about your content. So it's now March and well, it's April, um, essentially almost April. So let's say, for example, you've got six months of content ahead of you. So let's say for the month ahead, you've got 30 days ahead for this month. And so what I would ask people to do is, is that I'd ask you to write down what are 30 things that you know that are to be true or know that you know about your business. So let's say, for example, um, let's say, for example, if you're a, um, uh, let's say you're a butcher. Okay, I'm going to just make this up. So let's say you've got, and you have 30 days of content coming up and you've got a butchery type business. Now you're probably busy at the moment because you're in the food game, but equally is tell us uh, what are all the different types of meats that you've, that you've got. Then under each of those meats, what are the different types of ways that you could cook each of those meats? 
Um, what are the benefits and the nutrition, nutrients in each of those meats? Um, what would you serve them with? What are the types of wines that go with those meats? Um, there's so many different things. So let's say if you're, um, maybe you're a florist, educate us on the background of a particular flower. You know, where did it come from? How did it get its name? Tell us the story. Um, why is it your favourite flower? And then, by the way, if you want to order flowers, then you can. So, so I, I just generally get people, imagine you have a, um, you know, the, I don't know if they have them over there, Kevin, uh, but, you know, like the bumper sticker on the back of a car, like, I don't know if you see it, but here we have like random acts of kindness is on a sticker and on the back of a car. Um, so I just encourage people, imagine what your statements or what you know is on a bumper sticker on the back of a car and it's going to be stuck on the back of it. So it might be... Um, maybe you've got, um, let's say it's, if you've got the butchery, it might be, um, you know, your statement might be something like, um, uh, create, creating great poultry di dishes during the pandemic <laughs> or something like that. Um, so yeah, I just say, write down the, uh, just a list, just go one, two, three, four, five, six, a list of 30 things that you know. And then the next thing that I would really encourage you to do is tell us a story. So Seth Godin said that people buy stories, relations and magic. So tell us a story and then tell us how, um, how we can improve our life by doing something with this. So it could be, if you can link to the problems that your customer has in this world that's related to that really helps. But, um, but when you're writing content, I generally say, if you have a story and a point, more often than not, that's plenty. Uh, but equally, a story and educate us, tell us, you know, what are the problems that most people... So let's say we were with a butcher, is we're saying, um, you know, most, time, most, most of the times I find these are the questions that people ask me when they're trying to cook chicken or when they're trying to cook poultry. They say, how long do you cook it for? What sauces should you put with it? Um, you know, um, what temperature or equally, if you've got the florist, most people ask me, um, what do I do if people have allergies um, to flower, to a particular flower or what, um, uh, you know, what does, what does the message convey if we have a certain flower? So think about what are the questions that your customers have? And if you can do that, then you'll find that there's people go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, but you're adding value to your customers all the time. And that will come back to you in spades. You know, this will pass soon. So, you know, it's, this will all come back to you. I, I love that. And so it's, it's adding value based on one of the common questions that you're receiving from your existing clients. Uh, I, I like to think of this, Jane, for me, it helps me compartmentalize it. Normally, what are my biggest frustrations that my clients or pros prospective clients have? Or yes. what's the biggest desires? that they have because yeah that pain or pleasure is the very thing that's going to capture their attention maybe not so in the middle but maybe more of the uh, the extreme point so if you have yeah. uh, common questions that come up from your client then that's definitely a great thing to do hey um you, you said something in there in the middle in the middle about seth uh seth godin and you said that he advises that in that educational piece it's story relations or i missed the last piece magic magic so tell, tell us if you can, if you're open to so tell us a little bit about the, the relations or magic. I get the story piece. We can tell a story right? and yeah. you have to realize there's one of my posts that actually got some attention because I'm not, not fantastic at content marketing. I'm growing my skills in this area, but one post that did get a lot of attention was because I followed that formula. It was a lot, yeah. it was a good story and then it was a point yeah. and not all of my content has done that. So that means more, the more we do the story and the point that's really going to help it. Um, how do we bring in the, the magic or the relations? Yeah, so I think it's two things. The relations is if you can make that link to the problem, so humanise it even more to, to build the connection with the person who's reading it. So, for example, in the white jeans example, is I'm going, okay, well, what's the problem that this person's having at the moment? This person probably at the, home, at the moment is trying to work out, well, what on earth do I wear? I have work clothes and I have pyjamas and I have gym gear. So, <laughs> so I don't know what to wear. Maybe this is how... Or do I wear this some kind of in-between wardrobe? So, um, so I'm thinking, okay, deep empathy is the relations side. 
and then uh, so tapping into the problems that people have huh. and then um, so and the magic um, I reckon the magic comes from one of two things one piece of magic is that I help with people with is um, finding a metaphor so a metaphor is a really great way to get cut through it, you know if you're trying to explain a, a complex topic so for example and it might be something that is really easy for you but your customer who's reading this is going okay this is really new to me so um if we said um let's say white jeans and people go i never wear white jeans what is she talking about i've never thought about it like that and i go well white jeans are like a blank canvas you feel like you're starting your day fresh and you know so people go oh well i know what a blank canvas is okay so all right well i can get a sense of what that feels like so um so a metaphor is a really powerful way it reduces the volume of words that you have to say uh, to help people grasp something but in a context that's familiar to them um, so a metaphor creates magic and the other um, thing that creates magic i think often is a quote you know referencing someone who your audience admire um, so you know in the white jeans example i'm referencing um, coco chanel so you know if you're in fashion then you probably like coco chanel um, so those two things can add a little bit of magic and the relations to your content too. Love it. I, I just, that's really on the money. So the key pieces in that then for the magic, bring in a metaphor or a quote of someone uh, that your audience already kind of admires or uh, responds to. Yes. And then uh, additionally, in terms of the relations, relate to them. Like what is the specific problem they're having? Jane, uh, is it appropriate from your content yes. point of view to actually ask your audience, what do they need right now? What's going on? Oh. Absolutely. Uh, you know, even there's so many great things in social media, like even um, polling, you know, you can put polls up. What are the things, what are the top things, top 10 things you're struggling with at the moment, uh, you know, in your world? Is it, you know, trying to homeschool at the moment? Is it, um, you know, is it that you're trying to work with your partner and you, you haven't got an office space, you haven't got a desk to work at, are you working off the kitchen table? Um, so yeah, absolutely. Ask your clients, ask them what are the challenges that you're having at the moment. And even if you create content is encourage them to comment. So what do you think? Um, what do you, in the white jeans, I go, if you, do you wear white jeans or do you, if you don't wear white jeans, what color jeans are your favorite jeans? Um, or what do you wear at home? How have you had to work out? You know, ask a question to try and engage people, and you often find it gives you more ideas for your list. <laughs> You're like, oh, actually, I'm going to add those under the list for next month. So, um, so yeah, I really encourage people to um, find ways to. If you can ask people, it'll take so much work off your plate. Great, I, I love that, and then we can be more directed and targeted. Jane, I, I'd imagine also there's some people who are listening who have maybe tried some content marketing before and really didn't see much return or felt like they put a lot of time and energy into it and didn't really get anything back. If there's anyone um, in that position, what, what advice or inspiration can you give us? Because I know uh, I know you do very well from your business, from content marketing as a way to generate clients. So I wonder if you share a little bit of inspiration about what is possible when we do this effectively. Yeah, so, um, so I think there's a few things. Content marketing can be used for, I mean, it's so many things. You can, it doesn't just have to be social media. So, it, you know, it can be white papers, it can be brochures, it can be podcasts, it can be so many things. So, um, and then this is where it really comes back to tribe and community. So the first thing you've really got to really look at is who are you actually serving and who are your tribe and who are your community? Because otherwise, you will burn yourself out very quickly trying to create a lot of content. Um, and so one of the things that I really encourage people to do is have a look at the work by a gentleman called Robin Dunbar. And so Dunbar or Dunbar's metrics uh, or Dunbar's numbers, he, he did a TEDx talk uh, and he's done a few actually. And he, he, uh, he wrote the book, How Many Friends Does One Person Need? And his number that he essentially came up with was about 150. And he said that, so he, he's a social anthropologist and he said that, you know, his question was, was why is it that some tribes in the world have survived through thousands of years and then other tribes have died out? Like, why is that? And so he looked at indigenous communities here in Australia and 
the Amazon. And so he said that we really have enough bandwidth for 150 people. And so, and that if you're in a big business, that's obviously more than that per person. But if you're, you know, in a small business is the first question is that I always go to when we're creating content is the first question I ask is who's in your tribe, who are your community? Um, instead of trying to do a spray and pray type method of content and, uh, you know, it's easy to lose a lot of time, energy, effort. So equally, so once you work out your, so I look at top 150 customers as in these are customers who have bought from you in the past and you like them. We all went into business to work with people <laughs> we like. <laughs> <laughs> So I go, well, you know, these would, be, these would probably be customers that you'd probably hang out with them even if they weren't paying you. You actually like them. Um, so they're, they're the ones that, you, and on average, my experience has been it takes about three years to work out who those people are. Um, so if you're starting out, though, if you're going, I don't have 150 of our top customers, even just look at, you know, maybe your top three or four or if you've got five or ten and when you look at your content, like I worked with a group today and we had one group that were creating a piece of content for only 10 people. And we had another group who was creating a piece of content purely only for one person, but that one person was a $200,000 sale. So we have got others that are bigger pieces. So, you know, there's, it's very targeted. And, but what I would encourage people to do is the first thing you've got to do is map your tribe got to have a good look at who have you got on your database? Who do you want to work with? Because you could be just creating a piece of content for only a few people. Um, you could be creating some more for other social media and, you know, if you've got a lot of followers and things like that. Um, but that's the first thing. Don't be afraid to be narrow. Don't be afraid to, to write something very specific. To give you an example, um, I had a customer, uh, uh, this was about, Oh, probably about 18 months ago, Kevin. And she was a lady that I really wanted to work with. She was a director general of a government department here in Queensland. And I liked everything she did. I loved how she operated. And I just wanted her to understand that I, I, I got her and I could help her. And she opened every single newsletter that I would write. And, but I couldn't get a meeting with her. And so I was like, you know what, I want her to see, I know she likes me and I know she gets me, but uh, so I wrote a newsletter just for her and 5,000 other people happened to receive the same newsletter, but I wrote the problem set that I wrote about in the newsletter. I knew other people would have a similar problem, but it was very specific related to her problem. And as a result, she not only rang me, she said, oh my God, you have to come in I need you to come and roll out this program she ordered 300 books for her staff she she was like I feel like you're in my head I feel like you're right in my office like you've been stalking me <laughs> so um so I just really encourage people get to know your customer you've got to know your customer well because that'll drive the content and if you can do that then your, your business is going to survive and thrive and look at also one other thing I would say is read your data look at the data as in hopefully you're sending newsletters out each week. We know that the consumption of content at the moment is double what it normally is, if not triple, like people like vacuums at the moment. But uh, if you make sure you're communicating with people regularly, like once a week is sending them something that's solving their problem, help them solve their problem, not buy my thing. Love it. Absolutely. That's a great way to summarize it. So, so much value in there. Uh, I'd like to give a summary of all of it. There's so, so many great things, but number one, who is in your tribe? Get really clear on who you're targeting. Otherwise, if you're going wide, spraying and praying, which I think was it, a term you used, you're probably not going to keep it on. I guess the more specific you can be, that's a really great example of how you can land an ideal client uh, by being really targeted to their specific needs. Um, the good news is that people are consuming two to three times the amount of content they are normally. So the content you're putting out there uh, is, is more likely to get picked up. The other key piece that I heard in there as well, um, really look at your data. If you're sending things yeah. out, look at what's getting a result, what's actually getting the interest, what are people interested in, you know, what do they want to, uh, to read? So I think that's, that's super, super key piece. Uh, I, yes. I also like this uh, 
hold Robin Dunbar number, know that 100, 150. Who, who are your top clients? Who are the who are those clients and what are they struggling with? What are the key challenges that they have? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've done the last you know five, 10 minutes justice with, with that summary. I think there's so much more. Now, Jane, I want to be really respectful of your time. You've given us so much value and information already. And I know you have uh, other amazing things to get to today. So I also want to ask them, people who have really enjoyed what you had to share today and they are really sold by the idea that getting this strategy right can be really valuable for them, their customers and, you know, and their business. How else can they do this with you? Uh, you know, and I already alluded to, to something at the top of the call about how you're helping and I'm coming to this, how you're helping people over two days to write a year's worth of content. So I'd love for you to share a little bit more, more about how people can yes. get involved and, and do this because to me it sounds a little bit, uh, a little bit daunting. So how, how are people going to create a year's worth of content in a couple of days? <laughs> Yeah, um, well, a little bit of context on how it came about, first of all. So some, I've been doing content creation boot camps for over 12 months, and it really came about because I've written seven books, as you said, and I had a lot of people would always, people I know who are trying to write books, they'd say to me, you know, how do you write all these books? And I would go, well, look, I go away, I lock myself away in a hotel room for two days, and I do this process, and you know, and then I just explain it to them and then they go, oh, okay. And so I go, well, go do that. And then I'd follow them up and I'd go, did you do it? And they'd say, no. And I, so I kind of said, well, do you want me to book the hotel room? And if I organise some other people, would you do it? And they go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I found was that most people really struggled to create a system and a structure and the tools to, to do it. So it really started that way. And this is the process that I use to write my own book so I write a book usually in two I unpack all the IP in two days and um, and so yeah so um, the way that it works is and this sort of came about because I thought our research has been that on average the piece of content for the clients I work with we know that around each piece of content we create will typically generate around ten thousand dollars worth of revenue for them so my thinking was when I created this was I went, imagine, particularly with, with COVID-19 on, my thinking was, was what's the most generous thing I could do? What could I do to help people with their businesses that I know hand on heart works and that if people follow the process that they could be able to do this? So I thought, you know what, I need to do a content creation boot camp and just see if whoever, the right people will turn up, whoever needs help will turn up. So, um, and I'll do it for free. And so this course is normally $2,000 Australian to do if you're doing it face to face with me. So I'm doing it online and virtually. So we're running it through um, Facebook Live. And essentially what we do is we create, um, the, the, we do 52 pieces. So as if you had a year's worth. So you, let's say you had a newsletter going out each week. And what I do is uh, I'm holding a timer. So we do what's called the Pomodoro technique. And every 10 minutes, you're creating a new piece of content. I give you a tool, I give you the structure, and my job is to hold the space for you. I help you to educate and work out how you're gonna educate your customer around these things. So you come in with a list of the content you want create, what you're gonna create, and I hold the timer, and I'm helping you with stories, I'm helping with research, if you need research in your content. Um, so I read a book a week, and most people tap into me because I'm a pretty good researcher. Um, and yeah, so by the end of the two days is you're going to have, you're going to be using some transcription tools. So I'll teach you a little bit about that. Um, transcription is where you're speaking into, um, a, a, an app that I'm going to, that I share with people and you'll have somebody writing it for you. So you, you definitely don't have to have an English degree to do this course. Um, all you need to do is have a go and you just need the support and accountability and some structure around you. And my experience has been. We've, uh, we've done plenty of groups and um, yeah, my thinking is if we could get, so we've got about, we're on track to have around 500 registered for Friday, we'll probably have over that. My thinking is, is if each person create a piece of content and we know a con piece of content's worth $10,000, then, you know, if we said 52,000, 52 pieces, so that's a year's worth, so $520 million in two days to be able to generate in assets for people's businesses, I go, I reckon that's a good crack at trying to be able to help businesses through this pandemic.
what is the most generous thing I can do? I can raise half a billion dollars for a small business. I, Jane, I can't do it. I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> I know it's worked on small scale. I just, it's, but you know, it's wonderful. So many people registered because I think this is the thing that most people are struggling with and, you know, to get a, get a return and try and help some businesses survive through this time, I, I think is probably the best I can try and do. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, and I don't have a vaccine. So <laughs> this is the best I can come up with. <laughs> Maybe uh, so with a vaccine for, uh, from business owners to help market their, uh, their message and educate their audience. So, so we call you Dr. J. Yeah. The key thing I <laughs> is the accountability, the structure, and support. And I think um, having that discipline to sit there, I, I think I, I certainly have some documents that I've planned out. This is what I want to write. And then you think about the process. Oh, awesome be very easy to go Ooh. so having the uh, accountability and the structure of support i think is going to be something that i'm excited for now it's uh, based in australia you're on brisbane time i'm going to get up um my time here in the uk so i think anyone in europe listening or asia listening you have no excuse if you know that you want to get this done yes. find a way to be there be on the call make it happen and i guess uh, to jane's point this is superbly generous because uh, jane normally does charge two thousand dollars to access this course and she's giving it away for free so um I think you should definitely jump on it uh, and, and do that. Jane, if they want to do that, they're interested in that, where do they go uh, to access it? Yeah, if you just jump on my website, so it's um, jane-anderson.com. So just go to www.jane-anderson.com. When you land on the website, you'll see a big red banner on the front page and it just clicks through there and you'll go straight through. Um, because you've heard about it through Kevin's show is that you just need to use a code. So it's got VIP 100. So if you click through, otherwise it'll charge you, but just make sure you use the code um, because we, you've heard about it through Kevin. If you don't want to use a code and pay Jane, I still think it'd be entirely worth it. Well, that's an option too, but that's <laughs> no, oh good. Jane, uh, I cannot thank you enough. Every time we get to speak, my uh, my mind expands and grows a lot. Hey, the other piece in there that I heard you drop in, you read a book per week. And I think that's such a powerful business tip. If you missed out on that one and you know you don't have the habit of reading daily or reading a book per week, wow. I, if you're reading one book per week, no wonder you can churn out you know seven books yourself. All that knowledge and information synthesizes. Mm -hmm. That's another bonus tip in there. So Jane, thank you so much for your time and energy. Uh, we really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks again for having me.